Calvary Church, thank you so much for joining us today. Today is a special day because we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And so in honor of that, we've invited David Garza, the worship leader from Calvary Espanol to be with us. And also Raul, the percussion player is joining us as well. So come on, let's stand up on our feet and let's worship the living God. Hey. Kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break As broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord on my way? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting my battle Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bow before the Lord. Let's try it in Spanish. Here we go. Come on. Abre las puertas hoy. Arre de reyes y se. de salvación vino a darnos libertad y quien como el Señor Dios fue de Our God is the Lion the Lion of Judah Roman with power and might in our battle Our God Our God is the Lamb the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Every knee will bow before our God. We say, "Y quien como el Señor Dios fue de." Quien como el Señor Dios fuerte Quien como el Señor Dios fuerte Quien como el Señor Dios fuerte Come on Who can stop our Lord Nobody can stop him No no Everybody hands together like this. Come on. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. And fighting in our battle. Sins of the world, his blood breaks a chain. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before him. Bow before the Lord. up together. 
Jesus. No hay nada, nada mejor. No hay nada, nada mejor. No hay nada, nada mejor que mi Dios. Oh, there's nothing, Lord, there's nothing. We believe that in this place, we believe that we serve a God who is always good, who is always faithful, who is always full of love and compassion and peace and patience. And all the things that God is, he will be forever and ever and ever, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will always remain faithful. You know, I love the song that we just sang because we're declaring some pretty powerful statements. We're declaring that God is a God who turns graves into gardens. What does that mean? That means that God brings dead things back to life and only he has the power to do that. We sang that he turns seas into highways. That means that our God is the God of the impossible. He can literally split the sea in two so that you can walk right through it. So if you have a need in your life where you need God to do the impossible, I invite you to lift your hands as an act of saying, God, I trust you. I trust that you're not done with me yet. I trust that you are still on the move and you're gonna come through for me. I'm gonna believe it in faith. So let's bring our needs before God today. Lord, we come before you, thankful for who you are, thankful that you've called us, that you've chosen us, that you know us by name. Father, and you've called us your own. So God, we boldly approach your throne in this moment with hearts of humility, hearts of surrender, and we lay our needs down at your feet, knowing and believing that you are listening, that you're a God of power and that you are working. You never stop working, you never sleep and you never slumber, but you are always alive and working. So God, come and do a work in our lives. God, we surrender our needs to you. God, where we need healing, where we need you to provide, where we need you to reconcile and redeem relationships. God, we ask that you would come and do it because that's what you do. You're our redeemer. God, and that's what Jesus, that's why Jesus died on the cross, was to reconcile us and redeem us back to you so that we could have relationship with you, total access to you. So God, we thank you. We thank you for the sacrifice that you paid on the cross for us, Jesus. And God, would our hearts always be inclined to worship you, to surrender and submit to you, to praise you, to exalt you, to adore you, and to stand in awe of you because you are worthy of the worship, the honor, and the praise today and forever. So God, we worship you today because you deserve it all. You deserve it all, Jesus.
today. Man, it's good to be in the house of God today. Come on, church. Let's give our worship team and our band just appreciation. I tried to dress like the worship team today so I can be in the band. But they told me you're doing announcements. So I'm here to do announcements today. My name's Jason, and I'm one of the pastors here, and it's so glad to see you here today. Listen, our church exists so that we can know God, that we can find freedom, discover our purpose, and make a difference. And whether you've been here two years uh, or you've been here 20 years, we love the fact that we continually grow in God's grace and God's word and through uh, with, with each other. And so if you want to get connected to our church uh, we have three ways. Uh, you can go through our growth track classes. You can be a part of our small groups, which started last week. If you're not a part of a small group, it's still not too late to sign up. And you can be a part of uh, a join a serve team. Everyone in here has a gift, and we want you to use that gift to serve one another, but also to serve God. If you're visiting with us for the very first time or you're watching online, thank you for visiting with us, and we're so glad you're here. Do us a favor and uh, text your information to CC Guest. 
94,000. If you do that, someone from our team will contact you this week, and we just want to answer any questions that you may have about our church. And you can also, uh, we'll also send you a Starbucks gift card just to show you uh, our appreciation for you being here. If you have any questions about our church, you can stop by our Next Steps booth out in our lobby, ask questions of our Next Step team, and we want to help you feel welcomed at church. And you again, you get that Starbucks gift card. Who doesn't love Jesus and coffee? Can I get an amen? All right, Calvary, can we show our first-time guests some appreciation all across the house? Thank you for being here today. Well, as I mentioned, our growth track classes start next Sunday, our fall growth track classes, and and we want you to uh, Take note of that. They're going to be right, happening right now at the 11 o'clock hour in the growth track room, which is to my right, your left, out the back doors here. In our growth track class, you're going to hear about our vision, our values, and we're going to help you discover what your purpose is. Everyone in here has a spiritual gift that God has given them. We're going to give you a, a spiritual gift test and just help you uncover what that is so that you can, again, serve God, serve others, and make a difference wherever you are. So go ahead and sign up online for our growth track classes launching next week. How many of you believe God for miracles? So you believe in the miracles of God? Yes, all across the house. Well, Tuesday, September 28th, we're having an encounter prayer service, a night of we're believing God for the miraculous. And so I want you to come out to that, and we're just going to set the atmosphere. We're going to let God just move, and we're believing God for the miraculous on Tuesday, September 28th. We have a special guest speaker coming in, Tim Forstoff. So you want to make sure that you mark your calendars, begin to pray in your heart, and begin to expect God to move during that service. Tuesday, September 28th at 7 p.m. We would love for you all to be out there uh, just believing God for miracles. Well, church, I had the wonderful privilege this week of um, uh, praying a prayer of dedication at, uh, on Martin Avenue Apartments, a senior care facility over in Naperville. And they gave us a tour of the building. And one of the rooms, I walked in, and there was a plaque on the wall. And it said, these chairs were donated by Calvary Church. And I went, ah, that's my church. Proud moment right here. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. I was so happy. I tried to take a selfie, but you know, I didn't want to look like I was, but you know how that was, right? So, but I was like, wow, someone's gonna have an opportunity to sit in a comfortable chair because of your generosity. And so I love the fact that our generosity goes into our community. It's gonna bless the nursing uh, care facility. And it's just, and your generosity goes all across the world. So thank you for giving. Thank you for being faithful to the tithe. And you know here at Calvary Church, there are three ways you can give. You can give online. You can leave your envelope or cash in the boxes at each one of our exits. Or you can use our new text to give number. It's 84321. Everyone say that with me. Eight, four, three, two, one. If you pull out your phone and you sign up there, it's as easy as just entering them out, and you can continue to give God what's his and be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Thank you once again for your generosity. Well, church, I don't know about you, but I've been loving this devoted sermon series. Have you enjoyed it so far? Well, today we have our Pastor Robbie bringing us the word today. Yeah, let's give it up for Pastor Robbie. No pressure, Robbie, but yes, we are looking forward to uh, what Robbie has, what the Lord has put on Rob, Pastor Robbie's heart, and we just continue to ask you to know what it means to live a devoted life. Check this video out. Devotion is commitment, a promise here for the long run, a pledge to the journey. It's being consistent every morning, every night, no shortcuts. Devotion is persistence. It pushes and presses forward. It fails, but doesn't give up. It doesn't go down without a fight. Devotion is passion. You feel it deep in your core. It fuels the fire in you. You're all in, nothing left over, nothing held back. 
Well, good morning, Calvary Church. It is really good to be together. Man, our media team here is really amazing putting that together. I'm ready to go run a marathon. I'm devoted. Maybe not to a marathon. But hey, my name is Robbie, as Pastor Jason said, and I am one of your pastors here at Calvary, and it is truly an honor to share God's word with you today. Hey, if you're joining us online, you are just as much a part of what we're doing here at Calvary. We want to say hey and welcome to you as well. Anybody really enjoy love stories? Like if there's a movie or there's a book, like you're, you're going to see that movie or your significant other is dragging you to go see that. Okay, I see some waving of the hands there. Hey, I wanna, I wanna make sure that we understand that this book right here is the ultimate love story. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's about a God, our God, our creator, pursuing us over and over and over again. It's a love story. It is truth. And so before services here at Calvary, before we preach the word of God, we got to get our minds right. And so if you wouldn't mind, stand up with me. If you have a Bible with you, carry it in your hand. And we are going to say this Bible proclamation together. Everybody all at once. Let's do this. This is my Bible, the inspired, inerrant, infallible, eternal word of God. All scripture is God-given and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. I declare that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and today I will be transformed by the word of God. All right, go ahead and be seated today. We believe that. Man, as I said, it's an honor and a privilege to, to share the word of God with all of you today. Uh, my family and I have been here since 1987. And so we've seen a few things in the Naperville area at Calvary Church. When, when you give, when, when Pastor Jason or, or other people are up here saying, hey, would you mind investing in Calvary Youth? Hey, would you give to CCS, Calvary Christian School? Hey, what you're giving matters. I wanna let you know that this right here is a part of your investment. I am Calvary Church. I've been here since I was three years old. Next month, <laughs> praise God. That's not a clap for me, that's a clap for God and his faithfulness, amen. And your faithfulness. Three years old, growing up here. It matters to be part of a local church and my parents knew that to be true. And so when I say it's an honor and a privilege to be up here and that Pastor Marty has given me an opportunity to share the word of God, that's what I mean. It is an honor and a privilege and it's because of your investment. We are in week three of our devoted series going through the book of Colossians, this, this letter that Paul wrote to, to the Colossian people who were once pagans but are renewed in Christ. And so Paul is a, is a magnificent coach He's a magnificent instructor telling us what to do, how to do it. And so we need to heed to the instruction that he gives us. Last week, Pastor Marty said some very clear direction for us. We want to be fully devoted, holistic followers of Christ. We have to have Jesus at the center of our lives. Jesus has to be everything. Three main things I want us to take away from today's short time together. In the next couple of moments that we have together, I'm going to say something between 3,500 to 5,000 words. <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm done. That's it. We're, let's go to the coffee shop. <laughs> average American, or excuse me, not American, average person speaks around 150 words per minute. I sometimes speak just a little bit faster than that, but I won't go too fast. Three words, seek, set, see. Three words are what I'm asking of you to remember from today's time together. How many volleyball players we got in the room? Anybody play volleyball? Any, yeah, no, not, okay, okay, I see some. Okay, cool, volleyball. It may be like in gym class, like you're like, okay, fine, I have to, you know, you're in the clothes that you haven't washed in four weeks um, at high school, and you're like, okay, this is now crusty, uh, but yet you put it on. Uh, in volleyball, and, and shameless plug for Calvary Sports Ministry, 2 to 4.30 every Sunday we have open gym for adults. Come check us out sometime. But I got to go return these actually after this. Um, bump, set, do you know the third one? Spike. 
bump, set, spike. You might just know that and not be a volleyball player, but you do know that the most effective way to maybe score points or even defensively is to bump it, don't judge my form, bump it, you're bumping it to hopefully the setter, the setter sets it, and the person that's gonna spike it is gonna score points. The most effective way to win the game is to bump, set, spike. But when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to life, we're not looking just to be game changers. We're looking to be world changers, amen? And so let's dive in to what Paul is telling us in Colossians. Seek, set, and see. Colossians 3, 1 through 11 is what we are going to be reading from this morning. Chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death. Therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. Pause. (laughs) I don't want to be on the other side of God's wrath. (laughs) He, Paul is giving us very clear warning. Don't be about these things because The wrath of God is on the other side of those. Let's continue. Verse seven. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Seek, set, see. We have to seek the things above. We have to set our minds on the things of heaven, and we have to see differently because if we are truly saved and born again, then we are raised up in Christ, meaning we have a different perspective about how life should be lived. And so we have to see differently. I also think seeing is twofold. It's how we see the world, but I think it's also how the world sees us as Christians. Seek. We are to persistently seek and keep on seeking. That's a lot of seeking. Have you ever sought after something with your entire life? Like you just, all your effort, all your energy is going after. Maybe it was your spouse because they said, not today. (laughs) It's not the right time. And then five minutes later, you were like, is it time now? No. Seek after the things above. The sport that I had a very small ounce of talent in was swimming. And so at a young age, my parents kind of went, hey, see what happens. And then I just, I kind of took off. And then, so excuse my, uh, my swimming references, but I, I saw this interview of, of Michael Phelps. And he, he talked about how during his Olympic years of training, there was a three-year span of him never taking a day off. Three years, 365 days straight of just training. And now we know him as what? The most decorated Olympian of all time or something like that. He sought after a goal and there was nothing going to get in the way. I believe that's what Paul is telling us. We have to set our minds on the things above. We have to seek after and nothing can get in the way. Paul, there was nothing that got in Paul's way. In in Colossians, he's most likely writing this letter from house arrest. We know him to go through shipwrecks and riots and a number of imprisonments, but that didn't stop Paul from getting the good news out. What is it that we're seeking after today? You can look at Michael Jordan here locally, Chicago. We know the story. Cut from his high school basketball team his sophomore year, but did he give up? No. And thank goodness for Chicago's sake. (laughs) 
<laughs> Six years of goodness. <laughs> Seeking after the things above. And look, all those earthly feats are great, but I believe that they fail in comparison to when it comes to the things of heaven. Amen? You know, when someone moves into a new country, I just had the opportunity to say hi to Elizabeth Phil, who grew up here at church, is over in Germany, and is back for her grandmother's funeral. Tasha and Jamie Kemp over in Indonesia. Chandra and Todd Lucas down in Chi Alpha in Chicago. When these missionaries move to a new place, they have to learn new languages. They have to new, learn new cultures and traditions. Well, guess what happens when we become new in Christ? We have to learn new things, put off the old practices and be about new things. That's what we are. That's what we have to be about. If you have been raised with Christ, we are to be different. Be about different things than we once were. Things have to change, which means we are seeking things of heaven. Secondly, set. The act of seeking depends upon the setting of our minds. As the legend and story goes, penny pinching Jack Benny, say that five times fast, was walking along when suddenly an armed robber approached and said, your money or your life? Jack was like, okay, my money or my life? My money or my life? The robber, he goes, well? He goes, give me a minute. My money or my life? I think today, although this is a funny story, I believe that millions of people today that things are their life. They have set their minds on things of the earth and that's what Paul is telling us to be careful of. Or as Oz Guinness puts it, theologies compete brazenly to rationalize wealth, success and material blessing. Prosperity doctrines gush forth from rallies, radios, television. God's got it, I can have it and by faith I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Even Psalms 23, has been revised. The Lord is my banker, my credit is good. He giveth me the key to his strong box. He restoreth my faith in riches. He guideth me in the paths of prosperity for his name's sake. Mm. We laugh, because it's funny. But I would argue, or maybe suggest, that people today spend not because they need, but for identity. Set your minds on things above, Paul tells us. On an average day, what are the decisions you're making? On an average day, what are your priorities? I recently did a study for the book of James and doing some research for our Vox community, which is our young adult community, which is uh, one of the things that I'm able to help lead here at Calvary on a regular basis. But it's said that we make, on average, about 35,000 different decisions per day. Now, that could be, do I hit the snooze? Do I get up today? Do I not get up today? Not important things like, do I brush my teeth? Do I not brush my, you know, I don't know exactly the 35,000 decisions that we make, turn left or turn right. But there's major decisions that we all make regularly. I believe I could tell you what you've set your mind to without even talking to you. Let me see your calendar. Let me see your social media feeds for those that care about that. Or better yet, maybe the one, let me talk to your friends. You see, I believe I can tell you what you're about without even talking to you. And here's the thing. Your life will tell its story even if you don't use words. Matthew 6, 21 tells us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The mindset begins with a prayer. I think sometimes we, 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 uh, we complicate this thing called prayer. It's just a conversation. God cares about our heart, he wants our heart. And so this is a prayer that we can, we can pray. Lord, set my, my mind on things above. It's a process, it takes time. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. John 15, seven. If we're abiding in him, if his word is our, then our prayers are not gonna be selfish. They're not gonna be for personal or financial gain. They're gonna be for Christ and for what God can do through us. We set our minds on getting things done. 
You set your minds on taking vacations. You set your mind on going to work. You set your minds on maybe coaching your kid. You set your mind on things. And so why is it that we've forgotten to set our minds on things above? We can set our minds on things above. See, how do you see this world? Do you view it from a selfish point of view? What is out there for me to gain? What is out there for me to get? Maybe it's a political worldview that you have about this world that we live in and the things that are going on. Or maybe it's everyone's out to get me. But, but can I encourage you and can I remind you that on a regular basis, Pastor Marty over and over and over again says we have to have a biblical worldview. Our view, our eyes have to be from this book if we are truly renewed in Christ. Verse three, you have died and your life is hidden with Christ. Our lives are God's. How we see the world has to be with his eyes, which I would attest is love, is grace, is compassion, is caring, is giving. Is that true of Christians today? Philippians, Paul describes this in Philippians 3, 20, 21. But our citizenship is in heaven. From it, we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to the subject all things to himself. We need to see the world as if everyone is a son and a daughter of our living God. And I'll be honest, it took me until 29 years old to really get this concept. I, I remember sitting in the doctor's office for, for RJ, my, my oldest uh, child, and, and, and it was his first checkup. Uh, like he was like a week old, right? And I wrote down, it said relationship to patient or client or whatever, and I wrote down father. And I took a picture of that because that was a name that I had never had before. That was a title I'd never had. That is a word I never had to write in regards to myself. It was a big deal. But then I remember going to the gym, going to the grocery store, going to get coffee and doing all these things and just seeing people differently. I was like, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter. And if, even, if, even if they were mistreated by their earthly mom or dad, more importantly, they are a son and a daughter of our living God. And if I'm truly a Christian, if I truly believe and I'm renewed in Christ, well, then I need to look at them as that, not as, well, this person hurt me. This person did this to me. Are we doing that? Is that the way we see this world? And I believe the flip side of this, Paul, I'll take it from here. Just kidding. <laughs> what is your testimony? Another thing that Pastor Marty reminds us, our time, our talent, our treasure, and our testimony. Do you save your testimony and you, you testify in church? You testify in small groups, as Pastor Jason said, sign up. Those are really easy times to testify about God's goodness, aren't they? And it's good and it's refreshing and that's how the local body, church, uh, the local body of Christ works. But is your testimony known at your workplace? Is your testimony known in your schools? Is your testimony known? Do people know that you're renewed in Christ or is it just you're going along with the gossip and you're going along with what everybody else is going along with? Are you caring? I have found this to be true, Calvary Church. It isn't God that people are not wanting to get to know. It is not God that they find unattractive because this is a love story. Who doesn't want to be loved? I believe it's Christians that make God look unattractive. I believe it's by the way we live our life. Are you caring? Are you loving? Are you kind and generous? Those are the things of heaven, the things of God. I've not met many people that complain about being around someone who's loving and generous, who has the right motives. How many of you have ever heard of a if-then statement? If this happens, then this has to happen. It's, it's it, maybe in mathematics you see that a lot. Then if-then statements are a type of variable logic that allows the output of the variable to be conditionally determined. Do you follow me? <laughs> Let me give you a few examples. If you wash your car, then it's gonna rain 24 hours later. Like, it's just one of those things. It's mathematical, it's scientific. I'm gonna wash my car, and in 24 hours... <laughs> if you get C's in high school 
then you will graduate. Praise God. <laughs> if you get C's in high school, don't then don't bother applying to Ivy League schools. Doesn't make sense. If then, if we are in Christ and have been transformed, there's that word again, by Christ, then we seek things above. We set our minds on things above, not on things of earth, and we see the world as Christ sees it. Somebody write this down. If we have been transformed by Christ, then it's evident. If it's not evident, this is a really good place to find Christ and to be transformed by his goodness. How many parents do we have in the room? It's by a show of hands. Parents, a lot of parents. How many high school graduates do we have in the room? How many college graduates do we have in the room? How many uh, uh, graduate school graduates do we have in the room? Praise God, a lot of smart people. Y'all should be up here. My goodness, smart people. When, when something significant happens in your life, you tell people about it, don't you? It's evident. Yo, when I graduated, I didn't graduate until I was 30 years old with my undergrad. I posted a lot about that. Let me tell you, I had a kid, I had a full-time job, I had a, a company that I owned. I, like, it was a big deal that I did this and everybody, you, you tell people stuff that they're not even asking about. You're like, do I even know you? I'm like, look, I just graduated. You tell people when something big happens in your life. Is there anything bigger than being transformed by Christ? I would say no. And it sounds like you would say no too. But are we telling people? Are we showing people? Are we in front? Are we saying, hey, this is how Christ is. Hey, this is what a life looks like when we are transformed by God. My, my little sister who's here, Caitlin, they had her and her husband, Doug, had a baby about a, a year ago, baby Carter, the youngest of eight or nine cousins or grandkids of my mom, Maureen. Some of you know my mom. And, and it's funny because you can see on my sister's phone just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I could keep going, and hundreds of pictures of a sleeping human. <laughs> but her life is transformed. Any parents able to attest that when you had a kid, man, things, oh, look at how, what, time, what kind of timing is that? Oh, there's RJ and Naya. No, you guys get my point. When something significant happens, you tell everybody about it. Don't. You think that being transformed by Christ, listen to this, knowing that he died on the cross for you and me, knowing he conquered death, knowing his mercies are new every morning, knowing that God forgives us, knowing that we have to live differently for all of those things. Transformation in Christ looks like nothing else and our lives have to show it if we are fully devoted, holistic Followers of Christ. Paul continues with instruction in Colossians 3, verse 5. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Put to death, unless your name is Jesus, son of God, son of Mary and Joseph, death is final. Death is what he says to put these things away. There's a parallel, actually, that Jesus talks about in Matthew 5, 29. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. Obviously, neither Paul or Jesus are talking about literal surgery of an eye or a hand. But what he is saying, what they are saying, is that it's a heart issue. Your hand isn't what sins. Your eye isn't what sins. It's your heart Paul is coming for all of our hearts. Proverbs 6, 27, can a man carry fire next to his chest and his clothes not be burned? We're dealing with fire, sexual immorality. We all know what that might look like, or maybe you don't when it comes to immorality with sex. Well, morality explained over and over and over again in this truth in our word of God is really simple. A man and a woman in marriage, sex. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Sexual purity. Sexuality isn't an identity. God gives us our identity. 
Sexuality doesn't, we don't have to worry about sexuality. That's already covered. Sex is a man and a woman in marriage. Cool, that's cool. That, I, I'm not identifying. That's just what he lays out for us. It's actually very simple. Impurity, he continues. He's referring to our character. What things are there that contaminate who we are? Stay far away from those. Passion. Passion isn't this, well, let me go do something for the sake because I'm passionate about it. This is the shameful emotion that leads to sexual excess. Lust, uncontrollable sexual urges, evil desires, wicked, self-serving lust. If we have evil desires, we all know that evil actions are not too far away. What we put our mind to, our feet will shortly follow. The world we live in does not help us with this, does it? It's said that on on an average evening of maybe you watching television or maybe you just scrolling for a couple of minutes through Instagram or whatever social media feed you might be on, it is said that in one evening today that the sensual sights that we see are more than our grandparents' lifetime. We are in a place today in this world where all of the things that Paul was talking about so many thousands of years ago are running wild in our life today. Culture today says sex is a part of love. What does God say? Sex is a part of marriage. If you love someone, don't lead them into a place of spiritual damage. You can't truly love someone while also leading them into sexual immorality. When preparing these messages, I understand that we're we're looking at truth. But I also understand that we need to process this. So I'm not just gonna read a verse and then walk off the stage because that's not right as a pastor. These are big things. These are things that most likely some of us in this room are dealing with. And let me tell you, as a person standing on this stage, Paul is writing to me. When I was younger, things that I dealt with. But here's the beauty, Calvary Church. We're in this together. This isn't a shameful or a a, a judgmental word coming to you today, but this is, hey, there's forgiveness. God loves us, and it doesn't matter what we've done or what we're doing because there's somebody in the room struggling or there's somebody in the room who has struggled. And this is the beauty of the body of Christ. The body of Christ can walk with you from sin into holiness. That's why we do what we do covetousness, desiring more than one should have, longing for what someone else has. It's really from the same evil desires that we just talked about, but it's fixated on material things. Materialism could be the true religion of thousands of Christians today. When Jesus is asked, what are the two greatest commandments, teacher? He responds, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. These sinful desires, these sexuality, conversations of sin, that gets in the way of our relationship with God. And that means that we're not loving him with all of our mind, soul, and body. And then when we covet, when we're just thinking about what other people have, why don't I have that? Why isn't God blessing me? And you, this just becomes part of your, 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 your daily mindset. It then messes up the relationship that God has in store for us as humans to help one another. In verse 8 and 9, Paul is now focusing on attitudes, the way we talk. Uh Uh-oh. See, now he's coming for all of us. If you're like, look, I'm married, sexual immorality, I'm good. Well, then all of us, at some point, attitudes. Hello. The way we talk, put them away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off your old self. Anger. How many of you are like thriving in life when you're angry? Like you're like, yeah, look, everybody wants to be around me. I'm good. I'm angry all the time. It's a great life. We laugh because it's, that, that sounds ridiculous. But if we do a self-assessment, we can look back and say, okay, yeah, there, I'm angry here. I went to bed angry this night. I'm angry here. This isn't fair. Anger is hardly useful when it comes to our daily life. Wrath, this, this boiling point where it just consumes you. Wrath or malice, planning evil. Have you ever maybe 
chuckled when something bad happened to somebody that you didn't like? You're like, <laughs> oh, I deserve that one. We're laughing because we've done it. That's malice. That's malice. Slander, hurtful speech. Nobody here done that. If you don't get these areas checked in our life, we will then be become a person of obscene speech. We're just wrapping up the book of James in our Vox community, our young adult community here at Calvary, and just got done preaching about James 3, the power of the tongue. What your tongue speaks, what your mouth speaks, there your life will go. And so if we're people of anger, man, I just probably got to go to your comment section on Facebook and see what we're all about. (laughs) Because that's just the same thing. Do not lie to one another. Lying is never the right thing to do. (laughs) But Pastor Robbie, you don't understand. (laughs) She did this. He did that. I might get fired. Let me just say this. Lying is never the right thing to do. Lying is against the very character of God. Lying is against love. We can't do it. Here's the thing. A great church demands great honesty. A great family demands great honesty. Great friendships demand great honesty. Marriages, probably the divorce rate could be way, 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 way lower if some of us just got this. Lying is never the right thing to do. I love the picture that Paul gives us, putting off our old self and putting on our new self, this changing of clothes. Jessica and I just kind of did a, a <laughs> get rid of everything <laughs> from our closets. And I remember going and just being like, I could fit into that. You know, this t-shirt or this running shirt, or I was like, I can't do that anymore. That would look ridiculous. That's what Paul is saying. Put those old things away that you used to be about. Put those old things, kill them, burn them. We didn't burn the clothes, we gave them, we, we donated them, but, but they're no longer. Don't feed what you need to kill. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. Verse 10, being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator in Colossians 3. This knowledge is progressive. It's conformed to the image of our creator. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, so we don't lose heart. Through our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day, being renewed by the word of God. And again, in 2 Corinthians 3, 18, and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord and being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to one another. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. The more we put off our old self, our old habits, our own mindset, the greater freedom we will have with a renewal of our new self according to the image of God. Knowledge, knowledge with action makes a difference. As we close in verse 11, we see Paul bringing everyone together in the body of Christ. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. The reason to get rid of your old self and be active and being renewed in this renewal of your new self, it will be so radical. It has the power to change all of our human relationships. This is what Paul is saying. We are in this together. With Christ, we are unified. This this new self lived out, seeking, setting, seeing. It brings destruction to racial barriers, Greek and Jew, religious barriers, circumcised or uncircumcised, cultural barriers, barbarian or Scythian, social barriers, slave or free. John 13, 35, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. How many know that today we can replace Greek and Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but yet we still see thousands of years later, racial barriers, social barriers, religious barriers, cultural barriers. If we are to live out the things that Paul is telling us, that God is telling us, then these barriers don't exist because guess what? In the kingdom of God, they don't exist. Why do they exist with us then? 
God got so much more for us, but we have to live in this new body, live in this new mindset. We are in this together, Calvary Church. And we can find freedom, like we say, we can go out and make a difference, but if we're not seeking and setting and seeing the world differently because our eyes are so fixated on God, then we're not gonna have those things. Seek, set, see. Can we commit today, Calvary Church? Can we commit today that we're gonna be a people going after heaven, a heaven-minded, focused people, truly putting off the things that once entangled us, putting off the things that have us caught up, putting off the things that have these social, cultural, social barriers, racial barriers, seeking, setting, and seeing this world. We can walk in freedom, Calvary Church. I believe it, I believe it with all that I have that we can do that. Will you pray with me today? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this encouragement. This isn't a word of shame. This isn't a word of guilt, but God, this is a word of love. And God, you have so much more for us if we just get out of our own way. And so Lord, I pray that over us today, from sitting in the room to online, God, that we can get out of our own way. Because Lord, if we're seeking after you, if we're setting our minds on you, if we're seeing things the way that you have put them, then Lord, we can truly find freedom. We can truly live and be about one another and encourage one another. Would you mind standing up with us as we worship the God that we just talked about? Thank you, Calvary Church. Let's worship together and sing. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait for you. 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 I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I Shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust. Oh, 
This word today, this word is a, is a word of freedom. Some of you know my story, some of you don't. But I need you to understand that there's freedom in reconciliation. There's freedom when God forgives you. There's freedom when you come to God and say, God, I'm sorry, I've tried to do it on my own. I've been doing this sexual immorality thing. I, I have these evil desires, this malice and, 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 and stupid talk and obscene speech. This is not a place, a zone of judgment. But thank God, as I said, I'm a product of Calvary Church and thank God for accountability because there's a difference between judgment and accountability. And that's why we're doing it. That's why we're here. That's why we have pastors and leaders and volunteers and deacons and people who wanna invest in your life. It matters. And so I think there might be two, a response for two different groups of people. One, I think maybe we just need to ask for forgiveness. And another, man, you need a God that loves you in your life because you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So can I, if you would be so bold, from the word of God that we just talked about, if you're in a place and you need forgiveness, would you mind raising your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I pray for you real quick? Pray for us. Heavenly Father, Lord, first off, we're sorry. We're sorry, Lord, that our minds, our setting of our, of our minds, the way we see has not been heaven-based, but has been earthly-based. Lord, we're sorry for that. Will you forgive us? Lord, for those in the room that might be dealing with something in the sexual immorality, Lord, you, Lord, because of the stripes you bore on the cross, we could be white as snow. And so God, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the purity that we can come to in you, God. And so thank you, Jesus. So I pray that over every person that might've raised their hand today saying, that's me. I need to be cleansed. I need to be set free from this. It has a stronghold on my life. And Lord, for those that might be angry, angry with the world we live in, angry with, with you maybe, God, angry with someone here. We have malice in our hearts. We have wrath. We have obscene talk. Lord, forgive us for not being of the things of heaven. Forgive us for not being good stewards with the life that you've given to us. Lord, I pray and I know that you forgive us. We are set free from those things today. We don't have to walk in those things ever again. We don't have to say we dealt with those. All we say is we are set free and we are a child of God. And so thank you for that. In your name we pray, amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. And for that second group of people, when I talked about this love story, when I talked about this truth that exists both for you and for me, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Your mind's eye has not been set on heaven. It's been just set in front of you and how you can gain something here on earth. Again, by a show of hands, is there anybody in this room that say, I need to have a relationship with that type of God? I wanna believe that Jesus Christ died and can live in my heart and can guide my life. On the count of three, anybody in this room, on the count of three, just raise your hand up. One, two, three. Anybody in this place? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Can we praise God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This goes for you online as well. If you need Jesus in your heart, will you pray this prayer with me? words that I say aren't the, the magic or something special. It's actually you just meaning them in your heart and you living them out. And so just repeat these simple words after me and let's pray this together. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying for me, for giving your life. I confess I am a sinner in need of a savior. And today I announce you 
as the risen Son of God, my Savior and my Lord. In your name I pray, amen, amen. Praise God for his saving grace. Praise God. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer in the room or online, will you do this quick thing for me? Just text CC New Life to 94,000. We have pastors and people who wanna get to know you, who wanna give you a Bible, who wanna resource you and talk to you and help you and guide you. As I said, the body of Christ can walk with you from sin into holiness. And that's our desire because we have the Holy Spirit on our side. If you're in the room, we have an I Have Decided booth just outside these back doors. We have pastors and leaders that you can talk to right now, get you a Bible, get you resources. Don't pass up this opportunity to go talk to someone about what's going on. We're gonna have some pastors and leaders down here. If you need prayer, this is this place for you. Can I bless you today, Calvary Church? Just put your hand up real quick to receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his love surround you. May his grace flow through you. And may we, as renewed Christians, seek after the things of heaven, set our minds on things above, and see everyone as children, sons, and daughters of the living God with graciousness, with love and care, with hope. Thank you, Calvary Church. You guys are awesome. We love you. We hope to see you Tuesday night at prayer. God bless you.